If you're of the belief that when prices are going up, it means that the buyers are in control, congratulations, you're wrong. In this video, I'm going to be helping anyone in cryptocurrency understand why when prices are going up, it means sellers are in control and why prices going down means buyers are in control. We're going to be using on-chain analytics to back this up. So make sure if you're in cryptocurrency, stick around for this video because I'll be putting it all out for you so you can understand when you see price going up, you're not going to be thinking like a retail trader. You're going to be thinking like the smart money and the powers that be that move these markets every single day. We're going to be diving into what news is hitting the marketplace and paying close attention to news that is coming out. But more importantly, we're going to focus on the yields and the bonds because without those, we're not going to understand if liquidity is going to be coming into the market or if it's going to be getting pulled out. Now, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe at the end of the video. Hopefully, I would have served you and you can walk away from this video having a little bit of information that you can use in your everyday trading and investing. So let's get with the program, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, futures drop, high yields sour the mood. Remember, when the yields are going up, it means the government is offering a bond at a specific rate of return. 4.9% on a two-year bond. Yes, please. I'll give the US government a million dollars so that they can give me my return of 4.9% on a two-year bond. What about the 10-year? Maybe if I hold it for the 10-year bond, I might actually get more money. No, you don't. On a 10-year bond, you actually pick up 4.5%. So what does it make sense for me to do? Go to the two-year bond market, which means investors yet again are still in the mind frame that they don't want to lock up liquidity for too long because they don't see the economy actually doing well in the later future. Now, BlackRock in this article has said that they are becoming more targeted on fixed income securities such as the US bonds market. But right now, because we're playing a macro driven environment, as we've been banging on about for quite some time, even this article right here where it says the market has fallen under the spell of the bond market genie and higher yield, said Tony Sycamore, market analyst with IG Australia. The focus has turned to managing downside risks. Should we see a firmer than expected US or European inflation data tomorrow? So what do we mean by all of that? Well, let's just go over and see where the stock market is right now. The stock market is showing exposure still 60 to 80 percent. And there's three distribution days on the Nasdaq and three on the S&P 500. So that's from yesterday. So we've seen some selling pick up in the Nasdaq and the S&P. But remember, we go back into the bonds market. We'll just quickly flip over to that. Here's the two-year yield looking like it's itching upwards, maybe taking out that 5% on the data that gets released later or even tomorrow. Going over into the 10-year yield itself, here we go, 4.5%, still inversion on the yields. And you can see that the yields are trending upwards, which would be suggesting that investors are not putting money into the US bonds. You want to see the proof of that? Check this out. You've got the US bond market, look at that, completely taking a nosedive on the hour time frame. And that is a problem. Look, we've got this whole gap right here that could be posing as an issue for us. Because if the bonds go down, that means they're doing one thing, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to their dearly beloved dollar. They're trying to refrain from adding risk in the marketplace. Now, with that being said, how is this going to impact cryptocurrency? Well, going into cryptocurrency, just as of late, you may remember what happened back in the day with this 9-11 S5 botnet story. So um, chain analysis has revealed 169 million in the Bitcoin that has been controlled by this botnet. Of course, this was the one that led to the Chinese national Yunhe Wang from being arrested. So we know there's $169 million worth of Bitcoin floating about. And this only came out this morning at 9 a.m. So it's just giving us an idea about you know, what the blockchain is really revealing. There's so much cryptocurrency, or should I say Bitcoin, that has lost, can't be found. It's locked up in wallets that no one knows the passwords for. It's just an absolute joke, if I'm quite frank with you. With that being said, going over into other news in cryptocurrency, we can see cryptocurrency liquidations hit 160 million and amid the market-wide turbulence. Now, listen, this is where it gets interesting. Stop or even consider thinking 
the fact that Bitcoin coming down is a bad sign. It's not, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got on-chain analytics to back that story up. And I'm going to share with you a way to view this, primarily for the Bitcoin holders. When you see this data, just put it in the back of your mind and think to yourself, is that consistent with selling or is it consistent with buying? Now, let's just go over to a couple of things. In front of you, we have got a couple of charts here, which just gives you a little bit of a snapshot on what's going on in crypto. Now, it says here, the exchange rate reserve. Now it says here, as the exchange reserve continues to fall, it indicates lower selling pressure. Well, lower selling pressure means what? Well, it means that investors are selling. Well, what investors? Because we understand that you can't sell if no one buys. We back that up with this chart right here. Look at all the green. The green represents where people are buying. The red represents where people are selling. So by that principle, if we look at this wick that happened on Bitcoin earlier on this morning, we can see a nice handsome $4 million worth of Bitcoin was picked up at the buy order of 67,200. Now, when we look at this chart, you can see that we're getting a little bit of a wave of liquidity coming in as Bitcoin goes down. So you look to the left, you can see up here that we've had lots of buying on Bitcoin. Now we've had a little bit more buying over here, 15.81 million on buy orders at 67,600. Go down to this area here, you can see there's a little bit more at 6.83 million when the initial order amount was 1.14. That tells you that someone's really eager to buy Bitcoin from this price point. And then from that point, we see Bitcoin make a move up. And now we're coming back into this range right here where we're not really seeing that much buying. If we're not seeing that much buying and then we marry that idea up with this story that the exchange is showing lower selling pressure, could we be using this information to suggest that the selling pressure from retail is actually dropping off? Well, let's just go over to the Coinbase Premium Index. What's so good about that? Well, that shows us higher values indicate buying pressure. So it says here, the high premium values could indicate US investors strong buying pressure in Coinbase. So if retail, which we would deem to be weak hands, is selling, that only means that there is pressure from who? The guys who are buying. So then go back and marry that to this chart. Look at this reading here. It's showing a negative term. That means, oh my God, retail, they're selling, they're selling the Bitcoin. Go over to Bitcoin's price action and it would be safe to say that people are of the belief that Bitcoin is dropping off. Look at the selling that's been happening over the last couple of days. We can go into the actual daily time frame, just bring that over for you. And you can see Bitcoin right here looks like it's getting ready to roll over. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I would be more than happy to see Bitcoin come down towards the 63 region and it would still be consistent with the bull market that everyone is saying that we are in. Granted, Bitcoin would need to break beyond this 56,000 zone to even suggest the idea that the bull market has been compromised. But even if it does go down to 56, it's still a good sign that the bull market is still healthy. Why? Because we need to see corrections. We want to see more people looking like they want to be buying. Now, zooming out on this chart, we can see that the buys, or should I say the bids, are concentrated all the way down towards this area here, as you can see around the 63,210 zone. That's where we can assume that there's going to be interest from now. Hypothetically, if Bitcoin were to drop from its current price point of 67,725 yeah, 67, all the way down towards the 63,272, it would be a comfortable point to be doing DCA because that's where we are witnessing the bids showing commitment to come in because these guys down here are like, what if Bitcoin drops? What if we get a spike in price? Because Bitcoin is prone to those price spikes, okay? Bringing it back to this area here with the Coinbase Premium Index, just notice that whenever it's negative, it shoots back up again. Negative shoots back up. Negative down here comes up. Negative down here comes up. What does that tell you? Well, when you read this chart, you're looking at it from a retailer's mind thinking, oh, the selling or the buying pressure is low. It means we need to sell. Who are you selling to? The guys over here that are buying. And then all of a sudden, price starts to go up. And that's when these guys who have been buying the Bitcoin are now selling it to you. Why? Because you're looking at this chart and it's going up green. And guess what happens? You are now the exit liquidity for the guys who have been buying the Bitcoin inside of this range. So when you look at that on a bigger time scale, looking at Bitcoin's price action, even if Bitcoin is to come back down towards this midpoint of this vector candle right here, as you can see here, doesn't make me bearish. What the hell does that mean? Bearish means buy. 
You see, we're all looking at it wrong. And you might think I'm a madman, but just look at this chart. Look, it says here, a bid order for 21 million. No one in the game of trading is buying at a premium. No one other than the retail traders, the guys who buy on a hope, on a whim, on excitement. You don't want to be following those guys. You want to be following those guys who are buying as price drops. Now, I'm going to give you something that I think will serve you all in your trading day or even in your investing approach to Bitcoin. Check this out. In front of you is the actual daily call premium and the daily put premium figures. Look at this. See this red line? That is the daily put premium. That means how many people are favoring lower prices in Bitcoin. We go to the calls and we see the green line, which suggests how many people are favoring higher prices in Bitcoin. Look at the relationship. When we see extremes on the put premiums, it suggests that people want lower prices. Why? Because price is going down. <laughs> what happens afterwards? Bitcoin's price goes up. These guys have worthless options contracts. Why? Because price is going up. They favor lower prices. They end up having out of the money puts. Unfortunately, the guys in the calls, which are the green ones right here, when you see the greens coming up, it means that they're actually getting in on the wrong end of the stick because they're seeing prices going up. OK, let's start buying options because we believe Bitcoin's going to end up higher. What happens? <laughs> it goes down again. This marries up to the idea of the bids and the asks that we've been talking about. When they drop price, they are buying. When they raise price, they are selling. And even a chart like this can help you understand. Just go back and look. Look at this. Look at this premium here. This is the call cool premium. When price was going all the way up, everyone was pumped that Bitcoin was going to end up higher. Price goes down. And then eventually, as price is going down, the, the put premium here, look at that, the red line, starts to climb up. People think, yeah, baby, Bitcoin's going to go down. It's going to go down. Mm -mm. It ends up becoming the reverse. It's all psychological, ladies and gentlemen. Your goal is to follow the masses. You want to pay attention to what they're doing, but don't do what they're doing. The next time you see Bitcoin dropping frantically, just know that behind that drop where people are selling, the quiet guys are buying it all up. Because you can't buy if no one sells. And you can't sell if no one buys.